What you're watching is a neural network attempt to guide a missile to the end of a tunnel. The missile started knowing nothing about how to move through the tunnel, but during the course of the algorithm, the missile learned how to navigate through the free space and complete the level. It learned these things through a process called neuroevolution. During this video, we'll look at the missile's brain, the training it went through, and how this all relates to biological evolution. This structure is called a neural network, and it is a simplified mathematical model of how the brain works. Neural networks have many applications, from predicting stock prices to image classification, but today the missile will use them to make informed decisions based on the tunnel in front of it. The green blocks on the left are the inputs. This is what the missile sees. The pixels in the tunnel are fed into the network inputs for evaluation. The black squares represent areas the missile is allowed to go, and the green squares represent space that the missile cannot travel through. The red nodes on the right are the output nodes. These nodes represent the decisions the missile can make. The node that receives the highest activation from the previous layers is the decision that the missile makes at each stage. The blue nodes in the middle are the hidden layers. This is where information from the inputs are manipulated and passed through to the output. The information from the inputs is passed through the connections and results in the missile making a move. The more nodes and connections there are, the more intricate the decisions the missile can make, since these decisions are based on many more factors. Here's how the decisions work. When nodes and connections flash red, they have been activated by detecting free space in the tunnel, and when they turn black, they have been deactivated. Activated nodes send information through successive layers until an output node is reached. When all information has been sent, the three output nodes will contain a value. Each output node represents a move straight, up, or down. The output node with the strongest activation is the move that will be selected. Now we can see how the input nodes, what the missile can see, result in a move being made. But how did these networks learn to make these good decisions? The answer is through evolution. This is what the guidance systems look like at the start of their lives. They repeatedly crash, unable to make the right decisions based on the tunnel ahead of it. But occasionally, one would have a mutation that allowed it to make a decision slightly better than all of the other guidance systems, allowing it to get slightly further into the level. The success, or fitness, assigned to a network is given by how far it gets through the level as a percentage. Analogous to biological evolution, fitter species of network then outcompete less fit species, and these fitter networks become part of the new population. The new network created may not be great, but it being better than previous ones is enough to bring it to the next generation. This repeating process of random mutations, competition and selection is called a genetic algorithm, which gets its name from how it models the evolutionary process. The result in this case is missiles that increasingly know how to make better and better decisions as the algorithm progresses. This process of fitness selection, mutations and competition imitates the process of evolution and natural selection that took the earliest forms of life and produced intelligent life. This is the output of the genetic algorithm as it is being run. The top left graph allows us to track the fittest network in each population, as well as the average fitness of the whole population of networks. The average fitness catches up to the max fitness because the fittest network in the population is the most likely to survive and mutate each time and so the population will slowly become filled with variations of this fittest network. The pie chart shows the distribution of network species in the population. The species a network is in is decided by its structural properties. You will notice that some species die out and new species are introduced in every new generation of the algorithm. Species die out when all networks in that species are outcompeted by other networks and do not make it into the new population. New species are introduced when random mutation leads to a new structure of network being formed. It is beneficial to keep a diverse range of species as having many different structures of networks in the population increases the chance that a random mutation will lead to a better solution. We keep such a diverse range of species through a process called fitness sharing, where networks of the same species share fitness, reducing the chance that many in the same species are taken into the next generation. The complexity graph keeps track of the average network complexity of the population. 
Complexity is measured by how many extra nodes and connections a network has after initialization. In this algorithm, we initialize basic networks with only a small amount of connections and reward mutations that result in an increase in fitness. This way, we know that every addition of nodes and connections to the population of networks will be a positive impact. The result of this is knowing as our networks grow in complexity, they also become better at guiding the missile through the tunnel. The bottom right graph is a static topological view of our current fittest network. We can see at the start it is very basic, but as the algorithm progresses, the fittest network becomes increasingly more complicated. You can see how the network in the latest generation evolves from the networks prior. Now, over 110 generations, the algorithm has finished training. It has successfully trained a network that can guide a missile to the end of the level. We can view the networks at each plateau in the fitness graph and see where the algorithm got stuck at specific points in the level. From this, we can view the evolution of the fittest networks and see what mutations allowed the missile to progress. Here, we view one of the simplest networks from initialization. It crashes straight away as the random initialization has given it no useful decision-making ability. Next, a random mutation to the network allows the missile to navigate over the first bump. This mutation makes it the fittest individual of the population. Soon after, in generation 15, a network navigates the missile slightly further on, after the addition of a hidden node. In generation 45, a large mutation to one of the networks results in a fitness increase of 20%. As you can see, more hidden nodes and connections have been introduced to the fittest network. Another mutation comes with a performance increase of 20%. The network topology has not changed much between the generations, which suggests a mutation to the weight values. Finally, at generation 110, the network learns to navigate the whole tunnel, thus achieving maximum fitness and stopping the training algorithm. Here, we have output from more runs of the algorithm. As shown by the fittest network in each of these, there are many solutions to this problem, all of varying complexity and efficiency. This algorithm is called NEAT, which stands for Neuroevolution of Augmenting Topologies, and was based on a paper by Kenneth Stanley and Ristu Mikulainen. It is different from other neuroevolutionary algorithms, as it doesn't premeditate the best structure of the neural networks. It starts bare bones and lets mutations that have a positive impact on the fitness define the structure. We have created a neat framework that can be used to solve many different types of tasks. The missile guidance is just one of many applications. NEAT has been used to solve tasks such as optimizing antenna shapes on spacecraft and optimizing wheel shapes on F1 cars. The program itself is modular so that the missile guidance interface could be easily unplugged and a new interface for training could be plugged in. This NEAT framework could be used to solve any task or play any game that can be described in a 2D grid of pixels. This is a hugely powerful tool with potential to be used in R&D and then with customers. The network visualization gives the user an intuition as to what is happening in their program, whereas most neural network interfaces are black boxes, with little feedback as to what is happening inside. This project was created from scratch in Python by Alex Kendall and Ed Cox for the Fujitsu Hello AI Hackathon. Thank you for watching.